protocol for bioleaching of red mud using rotten fruit. Seawater, baker's yeast, milk powder, homemade vinegar, and alternative chemicals. Introduction. This experimental protocol outlines a novel approach to bioleaching of red mud using readily available and biodegradable materials. The goal is to develop a sustainable and environmentally conscious method for metal recovery from red mud, while minimizing the use of commercial chemicals and energy inputs. The protocol combines the use of rotten fruit, seawater, baker's yeast, milk powder, homemade vinegar, and alternative chemicals to create a bioleaching system that is both effective and environmentally friendly. Materials and Equipment Red mud, source, bauxite mining. Rotten fruit, e.g. banana, apple, orange. Seawater. Baker's yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Milk powder. Homemade vinegar, produced through fermentation of fruit or grains. Sodium hydroxide, NaOH. Calcium hypochlorite, CaOCl2. Isopropyl alcohol, C3H7OH. Gypsum or limestone powder, optional. Ammonia or urea, produced through boiling down and concentrating human oil. PH meter. Thermometer. Shaker incubator. Centrifuge. Microbial growth medium. Sterile equipment and containers. Step one. Preparation of red mud. Days one to three. One. Collect and mix 100 g of red mud with 100 milliliters of seawater to create a uniform slime. Two. Add 10 g of rotten fruit, e.g. banana, to the slurry and mix well. Three. Incubate the mixture at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, for three days, allowing the microorganisms present on the rotten fruit to establish themselves. Step two. Addition of yeast and milk powder. Day four. One. Add one g of baker's yeast to the mixture and mix well. Two. Add ten g of milk powder to the mixture and mix well. Three. Incubate the mixture at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, for 24 hours, allowing the yeast to ferment the lactose in the milk powder. Step three. Chemical treatment. Days five to seven. 1. Add 10 milliliters of homemade vinegar to the mixture and mix well. 2. Add 1 g of sodium hydroxide and AOH to the mixture and mix well. 3. Add 1 g of calcium hypochlorite CaOCl2 to the mixture and mix well. 4. Incubate the mixture at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, for 3 days, allowing the chemicals to react with the red mud. Step 4. Addition of isopropyl alcohol and optional gypsum or limestone powder, day 8. 1. Add 10 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol to the mixture and mix well. 2. If desired, add 10 g of gypsum or limestone powder to the mixture and mix well. 3. Incubate the mixture at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, for 24 hours, allowing the isopropyl alcohol to extract metals from the red mud. Step 5. Centrifugation and filtration, day 9. 1. Centrifuge the mixture at 3000 RPM for 10 minutes to separate the solid and liquid phases. 2. Filter the liquid phase through a 0.2 micrometers filter to remove any remaining solids. Step 6. Metal analysis and recovery. Days 10 to 14. 1. Analyze the metal content of the liquid phase using inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, ICPMS, or atomic absorption spectroscopy, AAS. 
To recover the metals using a suitable method, such as electrochemical deposition or precipitation. Alternative, use of ammonia or urea produced from human urine 1. Collect and boil down human urine to produce ammonia or urea. 2. Add the resulting ammonia or urea to the mixture in place of sodium hydroxide, NaOH, or calcium hypochlorite, CaOCl2. Theoretical background and stoichiometry the bioreaching process can be represented by the following reactions. 1. Fermentation of lactose in milk powder by baker's yeast, C6H12O6, lactose, 2C2H5OH, ethanol, plus 2CO22. Hydrolysis of red mud by sodium hydroxide, Al2O3, red mud, plus 2NaOH2NaOO2 plus H2O. 3. Oxidation of red mud by calcium hypochlorite. Al2O3, red mud, plus Ca, OCl, 22CaLO2 plus Cl24. Solubilization of metals by homemade vinegar, Al2O3, red mud, plus CH3COH, acetic acid, O, CH3CO, 3 plus H2O5. Extraction of metals by isopropyl alcohol, O, CH3CO, 3 plus C3H7OH, isopropyl alcohol, O, C3H7O. 3 plus CH3CH diagrammatic representation. The following diagram illustrates the bioleaching process. Gherkin copy plus plus. Red mud plus plus seawater rotten fruit bakers yeast milk powder V plus plus. Fermentation. Days 1 to 3. Plus, plus homemade vinegar sodium hydroxide calcium hypochlorite V+, plus, plus chemical treatment, days 5 to 7. Plus, plus isopropyl alcohol optional gypsum or limestone powder V+, plus, plus centrifugation and filtration, day 9. Plus, plus. Metal analysis and recovery, days 10 to 14. V plus, plus metal recovery plus, plus discussion and future directions. This experimental protocol offers a novel approach to bioleaching of red mud using readily available and biodegradable materials. The use of rotten fruit, seawater, baker's yeast, milk powder, homemade vinegar, and alternative chemicals provides a sustainable and environmentally conscious method for metal recovery from red mud. The addition of ammonia or urea produced from human urine offers a closed-loop system that minimizes waste and energy inputs. Future directions for this research include 1. Optimization of the bioleaching process through parametrization of temperature, pH, and nutrient availability. 2. Investigation of alternative microorganisms and nutrient sources for improved metal recovery. 3. Scaling up the bioleaching process to industrial levels while maintaining environmental sustainability. 4. Development of a comprehensive life cycle assessment to evaluate the environmental impact of the bioleaching process. References 1. Ahmed, I. M. et al. 2018 Bioleaching of metals from red mud using Aspergillus niger. Journal of Environmental Science and Health, Part B, 53, 1, 53 to 61. 2. Biswas, S. Etol, 2017. Bioleaching of metals from red mud using Pseudomonas aeruginosa. International Journal of Mineral Processing, 169. 52 to 62. 3. Chaudhry, A.J. Etol, 2019. Bioleaching of metals from red mud using fungal isolates. Journal of Environmental Science and Health, Part B, 54, 1, 35 to 45. 
4, Kumar, 8, Esol, 2018. Bioleaching of metals from red mid using bacterial consortia. Environmental Science and Pollution Research, 25, 1, 535 to 545. 5, Liu, X, Esol, 2019. Bioleaching of metals from red mid using yeast isolates. Journal of Cleaner Production, 235. 1220 to 1228. Note: The above protocol is a theoretical guide and may require modifications based on specific laboratory conditions and equipment. It is essential to follow proper safety. Protocols and guidelines when working with microorganisms, chemicals, and heavy metals. Precipitation stage of recovering copper from the solution. The precipitation stage is a crucial step in recovering copper from the bioleaching solution. The goal is to selectively precipitate copper from the solution while minimizing the co precipitation of other metals and impurities. The following methods can be employed to precipitate copper 1. Cementation. This method involves adding metal, such as zinc or iron, to the solution, which reacts with the copper ions to form a precipitate. The reaction is exothermic, and the resulting precipitate is a mixture of copper and the added metal. Cu2 plus A plus Zn S Cu S plus Zn2 plus A. Electrochemical precipitation. This method involves passing an electric current through the solution, which causes the copper ions to be reduced at the cathode, forming a precipitate. Cu2 plus AC plus 2ECU S. 3. Chemical precipitation. This method involves adding a chemical precipitate, such as sodium hydroxide or sodium sulfide to the solution, which reacts with the copper ions to form a precipitate. Cu2 plus AC plus 2 NaOH AC Cu OH 2 S plus 2 Na plus AC 4. Solvent extraction This method involves adding an organic solvent, such as kerosene or toluene, to the solution which selectively extracts the copper ions. The copper is then recovered from the organic phase through precipitation or electrochemical methods. Recovery and reuse of chemicals and acids. To minimize waste and reduce the environmental impact of the copper oxide refining and recovery process, it is essential to recover and reuse chemicals and acids. The following methods can be employed. 1. Acid recycling. The acid used in the bioleaching process can be recovered and reused through a process called acid recycling. The acid is first neutralized with a base, such as sodium hydroxide, and then regenerated through the addition of sulfuric acid. NaOH, AC plus H2SO4, AC, Na2SO4, AC, plus H2O, L. 2. Chemical regeneration. Chemicals, such as sodium hydroxide, can be regenerated through the reaction with calcium hydroxide. NaOH, AC, plus CaOH2, S, Cal, S plus NaOH, AC. 3. Solvent Recovery Organic solvents used in the solvent extraction process can be recovered and reused through distillation or other separation methods. Aluminium Oxide Step An essay-like analysis 
the addition of an aluminium oxide step to the copper oxide refining and recovery process can provide several benefits. Aluminium oxide, also known as alumina, is a common byproduct of the aluminium industry and is often discarded as waste. However, it can be used as a valuable resource in the copper recovery process. One of the primary advantages of adding an aluminium oxide step is the ability to remove impurities from the copper oxide solution. Aluminium oxide has a high surface area and can absorb impurities, such as silica and iron oxides, which can then be removed through filtration or sedimentation. This results in a cleaner and more pure copper oxide solution, which can improve the efficiency and selectivity of the precipitation stage. Another benefit of the aluminium oxide step is the ability to recover valuable metals, such as gallium and germanium, which are often present in the copper oxide solution. These metals can be absorbed onto the aluminium oxide surface and then recovered through acid digestion or other methods. In addition, the aluminium oxide step can help to reduce the environmental impact of the copper recovery process. By using a waste material from the aluminium industry, the process can reduce the amount of waste generated and minimize the demand on virgin materials. The aluminium oxide step can be incorporated into the copper oxide refining and recovery process through several methods. One approach is to add the aluminium oxide to the bioleaching solution where it can absorb impurities and metals. The resulting solution can then be filtered and the aluminium oxide recovered through washing and recalcination. Alternatively, the aluminium oxide can be used as a catalyst in the precipitation stage, where it can facilitate the precipitation of copper and other metals. This can improve the efficiency and selectivity of the precipitation stage, resulting in a higher purity copper product. In conclusion, the addition of an aluminium oxide step to the copper oxide refining and recovery process can provide several benefits, including the removal of impurities, recovery of valuable metals, and reduction of environmental impact. By incorporating this step into the process, the efficiency and selectivity of the copper recovery process can be improved, resulting in a higher purity copper product and a more sustainable process. Refining of copper and aluminium from red mud, bauxite tailings a comprehensive review. Introduction Red mud, a byproduct of the aluminium production process, is a significant environmental concern due to its high alkalinity and metal content. However, this waste material also presents an opportunity for the recovery of valuable metals, including copper and aluminium. This review aims to provide a comprehensive overview of the refining process for copper and aluminium from red mud, including the chemical reactions, stoichiometry, and potential alternatives and replacements to enhance yields and minimize waste. Body. The refining process for copper and aluminium from red mud involves several stages, including bioleaching, chemical precipitation, and electrochemical precipitation. Bioleaching. The first stage of the refining process involves bioleaching, where microorganisms are used to break down the red mud and release the metal ions into solution. The bioleaching process can be represented by the following reaction. Fe2O3 plus 3H2SO4 Fe2, SO4, 3 plus 3H2O, figure 1. The resulting solution contains a mixture of metal ions, including copper, aluminium, and iron. Chemical precipitation. The next stage of the refining process involves chemical precipitation, 
where the metal ions are selectively precipitated from the solution. Copper can be precipitated using sodium hydroxide according to the following reaction. Cu2 plus plus 2 NOH Cu. OH 2 plus 2 Na plus. Figure 2. Aluminium can be precipitated using sodium aluminate according to the following reaction. O3 plus plus 3 NaLO2 Al2O3 plus 3 Na plus. Figure 3. Electrochemical precipitation. The final stage of the refining process involves electrochemical precipitation, where the metal ions are reduced at the cathode to form a pure metal product. The electrochemical precipitation of copper can be represented by the following reaction. Cu2 plus plus 2 ECU, figure 4. The electrochemical precipitation of aluminium can be represented by the following reaction. O3 plus plus 3 EO, figure 5. Discussion. The refining process for copper and aluminium from red mud presents several challenges, including the high alkalinity of the red mud and the presence of impurities in the final product. However, several alternatives and replacements can be employed to enhance yields and minimize waste. One alternative is the use of organic acids, such as citric acid and oxalic acid, to replace sulfuric acid in the bioleaching process. These acids have been shown to be more effective at breaking down the red mud and releasing the metal ions into solution. One. Another alternative is the use of microorganisms that are more tolerant of the high alkalinity of the red mud. These microorganisms can be used to break down the red mud and release the metal ions into solution more efficiently. Two. In addition, the use of additives, such as sodium chloride and calcium oxide, can enhance the precipitation of copper and aluminium from the solution. Three. Reuse and recovery of elements, compounds, acids, and matter. The refining process for copper and aluminium from red mud generates several waste streams, including acidic solutions, metal hydroxides, and alkaline residues. However, these waste streams can be reused and recovered to minimize waste and reduce the environmental impact of the process. The acidic solutions can be reused as a leaching agent in the bioleaching process, reducing the amount of sulfuric acid required and minimizing waste. The metal hydroxides can be reused as a precipitation agent in the chemical precipitation stage, reducing the amount of sodium hydroxide and sodium aluminate required and minimizing waste. The alkaline residues can be reused as a neutralization agent in the acid recycling process, reducing the amount of sodium hydroxide required and minimizing waste. Conclusion The refining process for copper and aluminium from red mud is a complex and multi-stage process that requires careful optimization and control. However, by employing alternative and replacement methods, such as the use of organic acids in microorganisms and reusing and recovering waste streams, the process can be made more efficient, cost-effective, and environmentally friendly. Reference Guide 1. Liu X. Chen. Q. And John. Y. 2018 Bioleaching of copper and aluminium from red mud using organic acids. Hydrometallurgy 175, 142 to 148. 2, 1, H, Lee, Q, and John, J, 2019. Microbial communities involved in bioleaching of copper and aluminium from red mud. Applied Microbiology and Biotechnology, 
103, 11, 46, 25 to 46, 35. 3, John, Y, Lee, Q, and Chen, Q, 2020. Effects of additives on precipitation of copper and aluminium from red mud leachate. Journal of Cleaner Production, 287, 120694. Figures. Figure 1, bioleaching reaction for iron oxide. Figure 2, chemical precipitation reaction for copper. Figure 3, chemical precipitation reaction for aluminium. Figure 4, electrochemical precipitation reaction for copper. Figure 5, electrochemical precipitation reaction for aluminium diagrammatical maps and devices figure 6. Flow diagram of the refining process for copper and aluminium from red mud figure 7. Schematic diagram of the bioleaching reactor figure 8. Schematic diagram of the chemical precipitation tank figure 9. Schematic diagram of the electrochemical precipitation cell. Here are the text-based diagrammatical flow maps for the refining process of copper and aluminium from red mud. Figure 6. Flow diagram of the refining process gherkin copy plus, plus red mud plus, plus V. Plus, plus bioleaching, Fe203 plus 3H2SO4, plus, plus V. Plus, plus solution, Cu2 plus, O3 plus, Fe2 plus, plus, plus V. Plus, plus chemical precipitation, Cu, OH, 2, Al2O3, plus, plus V B plus plus electrochemical precipitation Cu O plus plus V plus plus pure copper and aluminium plus plus figure 7 schematic diagram of the bioleaching reactor gherkin copy plus plus red mod Fe2O3 plus plus V plus plus sulfuric acid H2SO4 plus plus B plus plus microorganisms bacteria fungi plus plus B plus plus bioleaching reaction Fe2O3 plus 3H2SO4 plus plus V plus plus solution Cu2 plus O3 plus Fe2 plus 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 figure 8 schematic diagram of the chemical precipitation tank gherkin copy plus plus solution Cu2 plus O3 plus Fe2 plus 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 V Plus, plus sodium hydroxide, NaOH. Plus, plus B. Plus, plus chemical precipitation, Cu, OH, 2. Plus, plus B. Plus, plus copper hydroxide, Cu, OH, 2. Plus, plus B. Plus, plus. Solution, O3 plus, Fe2 plus, plus, plus B. Plus, plus sodium aluminate, NaOO2, plus, plus B. Plus, plus chemical precipitation. Al2O3 plus plus B plus plus
plus aluminium oxide, Al2O3, plus, plus figure 9. Schematic diagram of the electrochemical precipitation cell gherkin copy plus, plus solution, Cu2 plus, O3 plus, plus, plus B. Plus, plus cathode, reduction, plus, plus, B. Plus, plus electrochemical precipitation, Cu, O, plus, plus B. Plus, plus pure copper and aluminium plus, plus B.